Well, hello, and uh, welcome back to the Lost River Range. And uh, don't really have a solid plan for this one. Don't even really have a map. I just kind of have like a satellite image with my little GPS dude on it. And uh, so no topographic map or nothing. I'm gonna have to just explore on this trip and uh, try and use my memory from like studying it on Google Maps over long winters. So let me get my stuff together and uh, let's get walking. So I'm all packed up, uh, got my ice axe and crampons, may not have to use it, uh, better to have it and not need it. Uh, just took a look at the map, I think I'm going to start heading down uh, along Massacre Mountain and just see what I'm feeling from there. And uh, yeah, I, I could drive further down into this area, but uh, I'm planning to do a loop by going over these mountains here and uh, coming back the other way so I don't have to walk out or walk as far on day three which is why I'm leaving my vehicle further back here at this junction. So uh, yeah let's uh, see what we get ourselves into. So I think I'm gonna go up that valley there and this may happen to be the valley I exit on at the end of the trip. We'll see. This whole area down in here uh, kind of floods out sometimes and this part of Idaho is under a flood warning and these draws get some flash floods so I guess that's kind of another good reason I left my vehicle back up at that junction. Don't want to get stuck down here. I was walking along here and it spooked a, a little black bear and I didn't see where it went but I walk a bit further away from these willows here. So there's a nice little trail starting to form, but I gotta walk around the trail for a minute because that moose just vanished over the hill there. And I don't know if it has a calf or not. Don't wanna mess with that, so I'm just gonna swipe around this way and uh, get to the flatter part and attempt to circumvent the moose. Maybe what, within a one mile span point blank spooking a little black bear than big moose. You gotta love the Rockies, they're so wild.
So this stretch is Massacre Mountain, and I it's the unnamed pass up in there. I'm gonna assume it's called Massacre Pass. It'd be nice if they had looked everywhere. I have a power time finding a topographic map that you carry around of this area. But I'm gonna keep going along the base uh, in that direction. See, the clouds are getting a little nasty over there. Luckily, I've made my way into the trees. There's the Lemhi Mountains way out there. It's directly east of me. I think up in there, Shadow Lakes and a pretty scenic cirque. We keep heading that way and see what this weather does. I probably don't want to be up in the cirque when this stuff starts coming down. Maybe later tonight though, it's supposed to be clear skies tonight and prime stargazing. So the mountain's starting to get socked in. Hearing a bit more booms. I think I'm gonna look for a shelter spot by the trees and set my tent up temporarily. And have some lunch and just watch this stuff blow over. My camera's also making a weird grinding noise, so I think it's almost the end of this camera's life cycle. My shelter right now, about to eat something. Uh, looks like it's actually hailing a little out there. There's some grapple. But, uh, yeah, I got it set up just in time. Now, uh, time to eat. And, uh, hopefully it was just a low battery cause in my camera to make a grinding sound. I have a full battery on right now. It was on extremely low battery last time, but who knows camera had a very rough three years of being used by me and I've actually been fairly impressed uh, with this thing especially the amount of times I've dropped it so uh, yeah I'm gonna get some food in me and just listen to the rain and hail and big thunder booms back on the move clouds still in that direction look kind of nasty but they seem to be moving off camera to the right so I'm gonna get moving I'm now on some pretty well-worn trail. This makes it a bit easier. I've uh, reached a junction, actually. Trails are pretty worn down. I think I want the wet creek drainage. I think I'm gonna end up gunning for Shadow Lakes. So I think that's what it is, but I don't have a map, but that's the direction I should be going for Shadow Lakes. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, find out, I guess, if this is the right way. Nope, not much further past that point. Yep, I'm heading the right way. Hell Roaring Canyon and Shadow Lakes. Well, I'm taking shelter under my tarp. Some rain's coming through. Here's a little thunder. Still drizzling a bit. Um... Ring cover on my pack, it's sitting out there. And uh, yeah, just kind of waiting for it to blow over. I think I found out the motor noise on my camera was, I think that my stabilizer motor's broken, so I turned the stabilizer off. So the footage is gonna be a bit shakier, but at least it's not making that annoying noise. But yeah, this camera's about ready to be retired. At least it's still kind of working. Well, it stopped raining. That worked pretty good. Wondering why I'm doing this and not just using my rain jacket. It's because I forgot my rain jacket and I brought it with me. So it's somewhere in the truck. I didn't see it. I don't even know why it was out of my pack, but it was. But this is working. So I see some blue skies coming. Uh, 
this way, so I'm gonna keep heading up towards Shadow Lakes. This avalanche completely uprooted this tree. I got a sweet little tent pad with some firewood and a fire pit. As far as I know, there is no type of fire regulations because we're not in a wilderness area. It's considered a roadless area, that's about it. And it's probably similar to the Bob where you could probably even have fires while fires are going on. Shadow Lakes are up this way. I'm gonna keep heading that way. This is a good spot here if uh, there's too much snow up at the lakes. So I can't tell if there's really any snow bridging. It's not a big flow, but I don't want to twist an ankle or anything. So I'm actually just gonna hug around here to there hug around there to that guy and wrap around finish wrapping around the base of that cliff to get on the other side now i think the lower shadow lake is up here So I'm currently filtering my water. Looks like there's like a deer or bighorn sheep jaw sitting right there. That's kind of cool. And uh, should be pretty close to the lower lake where I'm probably gonna camp at. Worst case scenario, I could camp here in these trees. The wind gets a little rough, but I don't know. Those clouds are absolutely moving. There's the lower lake. Still pretty frozen over and covered in snow. So that means the upper probably hasn't even shown water yet. Probably find a nice spot to camp around here. This would be pretty cool. This view as I pan up is really impressive. Well, there's home for the night. I'm gonna lay down and relax a bit. It's kind of drizzling then kick it out here in the evening and have my beer. I'll pan this way first for the view. That's where I hiked up from. Really fantastic place. It's hard to see the elevation gain. Felt like a lot of uphill. Here's a tent again. Now I'm going to pan this way. The lake is down on that bowl there. The second lake is further up. But the lower lake is barely visible right now, so the upper lake's probably just snow still, snow and ice. For some reason my camera's motor thing stopped doing its... I turned the stabilizer back on. I don't want to speak too soon, but it seems to be working. I wonder if I just needed a re good, the good old restart. 
Lost River Ranch has tons of formations that look like this. It's really cool. Could be wrong, but I just flipped this rock over next to me and uh, kind of looks like a fossil. So it's pretty cold right now, and I just looked at the my satellite messenger weather update. The high tomorrow is going to be 48, with the low being, I think, 31. And the moisture doesn't start till 3 p.m., so I get a good head start to get down. I think I'm going to stay in the valley uh, tomorrow night. That's still pretty, pretty chilly up this way, and that way I could have a campfire. Not that I couldn't if I would have stayed a uh, half mile back over there. It's just... Camping with these alpine views is one of my favorite things to do, and this is pretty fantastic. Like, it's just an impressive cirque of peaks. I'm just really enjoying my time just chilling here, listening to the waterfall, and drinking my beer. Well, I'm all packed up, and welcome to day number two. I don't have a plan for today. Uh, we'll decide once I get to the valley floor, but first off, I gotta skirt this snowfield back all the way down. Now, I could walk down this way and be on that side, but I don't want to deal with the snow bridges down there, so I'll stay on the side it came up on. One last look of the Shadow Lakes. Bowl of Peaks, or Cirque, whatever it is. And it was pretty cold last night. I've made it back to the trail. It's so time to take the steep descent back into the Lost River Valley.
So I just made it back down to the valley floor. There's where I came out in the trees here. And I crossed this little field into what that Forest Service sign calls the Lost Creek Trail. I'm gonna head up this valley and see what I could find. Looks like an avalanche absolutely demolished this slope. All right, note to self, don't do any wintertime activities in canyons of the Lost River range because like a mile stretch, this is the eighth avalanche path I've seen. And it's taken out some pretty big trees. Blow down an avalanche debris in these forests. It's really slowing me down, so I just opted to cross the creek. Get my feet wet, but should be able to move a bit better and see it's already gonna reward me. There's a meadow up ahead. It looks forested on the other side that I would have been on if I stuck with it. So I'm here in this meadow and I'm currently at a crossroads. Do I, uh, A, head up this beautiful valley and up into those massive peaks? Or B, do I stick to my plan by going up that notch there and uh, get up high and get into that next valley to do a little loop? If I go, if I go with A, I'm gonna have to backtrack all this, which isn't bad, very pretty. If I go with B, I might get a view of the sunset, but uh, Camp A might be prettier, so I have no idea. It's lots to explore here, that's for sure. So I'm gonna chill for a bit and uh, see what I end up deciding. Well, as you can tell, I went with Plan B. Starting to kind of be glad I did. It's very steep and canyon-like in there with tons of snow. Definitely have to use the high sacks and crampons in there. Just the hike out would have been slow going. And it's a pretty narrow in here and there's tons of uh, avalanche chutes. As you can see, you don't have many islands to camp on. All that stuff will go straight down to where my tent, I assume, would be. See tons of the, get some here, 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 here. It's all avalanche and rock slides. It's really pretty up there, but it's maybe a July or August camp in there. The Rockies are a little rotten, so once snow melts, stuff falls. Made it up here. I started all the way down there in that uh, greenery. These rocks are actually surprisingly solid, but I still have halfway to go to get to little pass I need to get to. So far it seems like the weather's stable, but that could all change in a flash up here. So I'm keeping my eye on it. There's my unnamed pass. So close yet so far. Just gonna have to keep on trudging onward. Almost to the pass. I think I'm gonna take a pack off break there and get a, some warm food in me. Charge this camera a bit, it's on the last level of battery. I got no more left. It's just so cold and chilly, these batteries, these old batteries can't handle it. And I made it to the pass. A little buck kicker. Found a bighorn sheep trail up. Uh, they don't know grade, they just go straight up. But it got me here. I don't think I'm going to do the pack off break. That looks nasty. I don't think it's thunderstorm nasty, just cold rain nasty. But uh, I'm going to start heading down. 
the other side of the pass. It's looking out to the Lemhi Mountains. All right, I'm gonna tuck the camera away and get the ice axe out. Looks like I'm almost down. Well, I just made my way down that. Now I'm gonna boulder hop my way down to that lower point and then see what the next cliff area has for me. And there's where I just came down from. I think I'm gonna cross the stream here and the trail's right there. So I'm gonna stick there. I assume it'll stick in the greenery. Cause this side looks a little rocky and steep and I wanna side hill that. So I'm gonna put the camera down and if you'll see me, it'll be lunchtime. It's uh, rain's chasing me off the mountain. Yeah, here's my break spot. I don't think I'm gonna eat lunch. It's uh, kind of a pain to dig everything out. I'm not too hungry right now. This would be a really pretty spot to camp as well. I'm gonna, Sit down, look at the map on my phone, and figure out my mess. Bleh, figure out my next move. That was a lot of snow walking. All right, so it's drizzling again. Might put my jacket on. I think my next move uh, will be there's a lake uh, to the left of this red mountain. I'm gonna put on the camera frame. I'm gonna go actually have lunch there. My feet are freezing from all the snow walking, get some fresh dry socks on. And from there, I'm gonna drop down into the, uh, forgot, I'll put the name in below, I already forgot the name of the valley. I'll drop into that valley, and I'll have a valley camp for a night. And that should give me a nice, clean, sh uh, straight shot out. Uh, I am gonna walk a bit up that valley. It looks like a really cool meadow. That'd be really nice camping. And uh, yeah, that's the plan. Uh, let's pack up, get away from these birds that are harassing me, and uh, go to that lake. It's an old hiking trail or game trail, but there's been this on and off trail I've been finding either on that side of the creek or that side. It's been making, it's downhill pretty easy. Up oh, here comes some more rain. I should wonder if this section here used to be an old road. Let's look how it's gray. Look at the parting and the sage, and there's this very old wood here that looks like it was saw cut, even on the other side of the uh, creek there. Well, up in between there is where I came from. Wild down all the snow fields. Now, going to this creek braid, and it looks like there's that. 4x4 four four road I thought I was talking about. I don't know if it was a wagon road or if it was just for the side-by-sides. Well, according to the map, that's not the lake. That's just some overflowing. The lake's on the other side of the hill, off the screen of the right, so I'm gonna keep pushing onward, but that is a pretty sweet backdrop. Very gorgeous. You know what, this place is pretty awesome. Got a good fire ring behind me, a good grassy camp with some great views. I uh, think I'll actually camp here. It's not much further than down to the valley. Do got a little uphill tomorrow, but I'll be hiking out and I won't be carrying another heavy beer. But look at these views. Got this behind me. You got this looking out ahead of me towards the valley I was gonna drop into. Well, I will be dropping into that valley tomorrow, but this place is just begging to be camped at.
So the wind direction changed and it's now coming over the mountain behind me this way. I'm feeling raindrops and big thunder booms are sounding and echoing off all the peaks. So probably only a matter of time before the fire gets overrun by a downpour. So I'm all packed up, ready to head back up the hill to my camp. And uh, just having a beer to celebrate another great day of hiking and the Lost River Range. So uh, hopefully tonight clears up a bit and you know, I get another view of the night sky because the night sky out here in the Lost River Range in the Lemhi area is absolutely phenomenal. So for the second or third time in the past hour, I actually think I saw a fish jump. One just jumped right there. Doesn't look like a lake fish would be, and if there is fish in this lake, it's probably not very many. I put the fire out. Back that way doesn't look too good. But, uh, I don't know. I'm watching. Hopefully this turns into one of those sneaky sunsets. After that I'm gonna go to bed. Gotta get an early start tomorrow. One cool thing is I'm hearing, very rarely, but I'm still hearing shots of crickets here and there. Which leads a real peaceful night. For some reason I just love the sound of crickets and I go out to them. Like a rock. Good morning. No stars last night. It was pretty cloudy and a little rainy. It cleared up for the morning for the hike out anyways. Oop, I'm all packed up. Let's start our hike out. I'm gonna follow that old, or current, four by four dirt bike road up along here and then wrap around this guy. the valley I'm dropping into. See, I still got a lot of downhill left. I'm almost down to the valley floor. I 
walking to this gate and uh I guess it was just trail. I guess it used to probably be, I assume, four by four and closed unless that's just weird ruts some packers made kind of like in the Bob Marshall. And there she is, the ride home. Almost back there. Got to cross. I think I got either one or two stream crossings though, or river crossings. I'm going to be completing my loop. I started on that side of the river and walked up this way. Now I'm going to cross the river and finish my loop. Very glad I chose option B over A. Dry Creek's drainage is really beautiful as well as Swagger Lake. Long Lost Creek, my final obstacle. And that is all she wrote for this three day, two night trip. The Lost River Range of Idaho.